G'day everyone, it's your Uncle Jojo. Great to see you all again. Today we've been asked a question by Flora. G'day Flora. Uh, she's asked us a question about building a house down near the sea. When we build a house down near the sea, we need to make sure that we up all of our protective measures of both the house and the different metals and materials that we use. So come with me, I'm lucky enough today to be at a, a house right near the beach and we'll have a look at a few bits and pieces that we can do to make sure that we've taken the proper steps necessary to protect the materials that we use. One thing that needs to be said though is when you build a house within not just the area of the ocean but within about 3 k's of the ocean you need to make sure that you do extra measures. Alternatively, if it's completely surrounded by ocean, then you need to make sure that you do these measures as well. Because when there's salt in the air, everybody prepare. That's what you need to remember. When there's salt in the air, make sure you prepare. You need to prepare everything when there's salt in the air. So just something to consider. Let's have a look. Here we've got some raw timber. It's a pergola. Now this is an Oregon. You can see that it's a new Oregon. There's a lot of cracks and splits coming on. In this corner right here, have a look. In that corner right there is um, rust coming through. Now these nails that have been used here haven't been galvanized. They're just raw metal nails. Salt water will affect anything that is metal, anything that's metal. If you do not galvanize it or have stainless steel, then there's gonna be major consequences. The metal will react with the salt water, the salt water will get into the metal and it'll start to expand and pop anything as the rust starts to develop on that metal. So firstly, galvanized nails, always galvanized nails. If we have a look at this deck here, these are all galvanized nails. You could also use stainless steel on that as well. One thing to really make sure that we do is paint really well. You can see there all the sap coming through. Now these have only really had a primer, most probably, and then a top coat. What really needed to happen with this timber work is it needs to have um, two primers and three top coats. We, you'd also do that on external cladding of any sort, because what it does is it's being exposed to the weather this way, it'll really protect those materials from not only the sun, but also the wind and that salt water in the air. When we, do ex when we do external cladding like this, we need to make sure that we go to the nth degree to double seal it. So these walls need to be sealed twice first with a primer and then two to three top coats of a weather shield Dulux, I would suggest. Um, but it needs to be done with a very good hardy paint. Now, if you have a look just here, you can see these nails just come right down here. See this nail here? This is the rust coming through. So if you come back and have a look over this whole board, we've got nails popping out all the way through here. This is a sign that moisture is getting into this board, getting into these nails. And as the nails get full of rust, the board is going to pop off. Now if you have a look here, you can see this board actually moving. Now I can move that 15, 20 mil. This whole flashing here is too high and it's running down on an angle. You can see here, that there is our level point. That there is our level point. Look how far that's running backwards. So that there gives me 25, 30 mil of running backwards, plus it's not out. And this is another big one. Firstly, this flashing's black, so it absorbs a lot of sun. Now look at this join over here. split there so the fixings or silicons and glues that you use need to be of a high quality strength uh, just to make sure that they can compete with the number one the heat of the Sun we're facing north northwest which means we're going to get a lot of Sun all day long and then the next thing we need to make sure of is that they're not going to rust um, absorb too much water and then start to pop so we've really got you this is why I'm saying you need to flora you need to be making sure that you go to the nth degree to prepare the house properly before you paint and then once you've painted you need to make sure that it's done on a regular basis to stop any of that bubbling in the roof and we're able to see the damage 
that the rust is doing to these nails. It's popping the external cladding off the wall. Flushing here is loose. You can see that all expanding and going up. Now that means that the water is going to be running backwards into these sheets. So these sheets, I don't know if you can see that, they're actually moving completely. So there's no fixing back into the stud work behind it. So the sheet starts to pull off and this starts to come up, which means it'll all hold water. And it's not just any water, but it's actually salt water, which hence why the nails are starting to rust. The water is absorbed into the external cladding material, i.e. the timber cladding, and then getting into those nails and rusting those nails out. Look at this corner here. This corner here, that corner there has only had one, maybe two coats of paint on. It's just peeling off everywhere and the actual corners peeling off as well as the paint. Here we've got an internal flushing and the silicon's completely eaten away from the sun. Now that's letting water in. There's a big gap between the silicon because that's completely come apart and the fixing here is popped out. Now this is going to be popping out on a regular basis from expansion contraction. The flashing's black. Look at this. Everything that's along there you can see all those fixings along there is popping out. Now that's expansion contraction. Once the flashing, because it's black, gets heated up, it expands and it'll pop just a little bit. It only needs to pop a little bit at a time. And over five years, 10 years, those nails or the fixings themselves will start to work their way out. Um, again, with the silicon, you need to make sure that you use a high quality silicon that is able to take the heat of the sun, um, the heat of the flashings being black, and the different types of high wind pressures that you get in an area like this. Turn around, that's how close we are to the ocean. That's not even a K away, the bottom of the hill. You've got a bracket that's on copper. No, that's plastic. You are not allowed to have plastic coming up from the ground. You need That needs to be copper. And this here, you can see it just rusting. Now the salt water's just gotten into that and that's just popped off as the, as the steel expands from the rust eating into it. This stone here is Hawkesbury stone or what's called sandstone, Hawkesbury stone, yellowstone. Really top notch stuff for around the oceans. A great cladding system to have is um, Hawkesbury stone or, or sandstone. We might go to Sydney one day and I'll show you the amount of hawkstone, yellowstone or sandstone that's been used up there. Here we've got a really nice set of stairs leading up, but by this stair tread I can see that this is actually pine. The pine, if it's not treated properly and sealed, will start splitting. There's no moisture left in the timber and it's a young pine so it's going to show its weakness facing the west the way it is. Look at the size of the crack on that. So these stairs needed to be the whole way through a hardwood because we're facing the western sun. And again, so the western sun's just here, the north and the west northwestern sun. Those those stairs are copping it. So you need to make sure that if you're building in that area that you over engineer. Here we can see across the ceiling all of the salt that's sitting on top of this ceiling here. Look at that just there, that's full on. And that's why it's so important in areas like this. Look at all the salt along that. Yep. Salt along that. Look at all that salt. So that's why it's super important that we make sure that we get rid of all of that salt. Sorry, that's why we make sure that we seal everything really well so that salt can't get into these materials like either the cement sheet or the timber. Look over here, whoa. Here we've got moss growing. This is the south face. Moss is growing there. Water's collecting in that flushing. All of those nails are rusting. And if we look right down the end there, I'll try and get the ladder. Right down the end there, we've got water coming through and pooling. Now, this isn't even in the sun here, and you can see the rust coming through these nails. Even stainless steel, even stainless steel nails 
or stainless steel fittings and fixtures, they can still sometimes have really weak points of steel in them that rust all the way through or start to discolor and then start to expand and get the, the salt gets into them and they start to pop and break and warp and bend and pop, pop. Okay, so here what we've got is the rubber flashing under the windows. Now rubber, if you look on the underside, that's still really, that's still really quite healthy. But if you look at the top side, it's showing signs of aging and deterioration already. Now, what ends up happening is in a very short period of time, again, it's facing the northwest, so the hottest part of the day. That'll deteriorate really quickly. That'll disappear and it'll allow the water and the heat to be hitting here and that'll deteriorate this cladding system much quicker. That's why we need to make sure that this is painted and this has got a secondary seal behind it. Being this close to the ocean needs to have a secondary seal. You can see that this is already deteriorating all along there. Here we have one of the biggest things about being next to the ocean, a brick pillar that has metal edging down the edges. It's been rendered. Come over here. This, look at this here. This is cracking all the way down here. So what's happened is the salt air has got into a, a scratch. So if you step over here, it starts like this. Starts like this. Bit of metal edging getting shown. The salt water is gonna get into that. The salt in the air is gonna get into that and then it's gonna turn out like this the salt water will start to rust the metal edging and then the metal edging will expand and all of this render will start to pop off. Need to make sure you prep when you build in a place like this. And if you're gonna be doing rendering, try and get a plastic or try and get a galvanized. Galvanized first and then plastic second. Um, preferably not plastic if you can help it, but sometimes you can't help it. Let's just have a look at something else. See, this is, you can see the salt sitting in here. Now that's eating into that external edge all the way through. And then we step over here. And this is a silly one that a lot of people do, is that is a Dynabolt. Now people put fixings like this into their walls all the time. People put fixing like that into places like this near the sea all the time or near the ocean. And what ends up happening is that'll expand into the brickwork with that rust getting into the metal and it'll pop and it'll start to pop actually all of the brickwork and the render all around that as well so you won't just be able to have to fill that you'll have to grind all of the mortar out around that and fix the whole area it's it, rust is like a cancer to steel check this one out this one's even worse so this this here is even worse here you can see an expansion gap opening up and this is a slab inside have a crack like this opening up along the edge of your slab and salt water gets into your Rio bar inside that slab, what's gonna happen, people? It's gonna to start to expand. The salt water is gonna get into that steel and it's gonna expand the steel as the rust eats into it and then you're actually gonna start popping this off. Now that crack goes all the way along, all the way down and there's moss growing out of it all the way through. Now have a look here, our window sill here. Now flashing is behind the render, which means there's nowhere for this water to go. The water's gonna come down here, the water's gonna come down here, and then come into the brick. It has nowhere for it to go. That there, that seal there isn't even on an angle. That seal there should be on an angle like this. So what happens is the window would be up here, and then any water that falls off this will come straight off and onto the ground or into the soil. It won't be, um, sitting in here because now it's going to allow the water to run down inside that wall cavity again into that brick or block work and any rio bar that's in there and expand and contract sorry and start to expand it and then like what you said before it'll eat away that rust that rust will eat away that steel and then it'll start to pop warp bend and pop here's another look at the bolts see now this is another one where the bolt in here you can see, but you can't really see with the camera. I can't get the camera in there. That bolt there is actually rusting away. Now there's four bolts along that whole run. That whole run means we've got a weak point where the bolts are inside the brick wall. If they rust away completely, they can actually start to pop away the brickwork from behind. This here, it would have been, this here would have been installed and it's galvanized, but 
from use and wear and tear, it's all completely worn away. And now it's showing complete signs of rust. The gate would have been zinc loom or galvanized. And even these corners have been painted. You can see that the rust is coming through. Now here, we're on the south corner. Now the south corner isn't getting any sun whatsoever. And look at all the water inside that flushing. Now all of that's going to have salt contained in it, soaking all the way up into that timber work. Even these, look at all these nails just rusting away. All this flushing here, it's all holding water, and that moss is showing it, and it's all the way along there. The water's running the wrong way even. So you can see up that end, the water, there's hardly any, and by the time you get down here, this shadow line is getting further and further out. So it's holding water all the way back to here by the time we get to this corner. So not only will it eat away that silicon, but it's also gonna eat away the cladding that's there as well, and then go into the wall cavity if the flashing's not done properly, get inside that wall cavity and eat away that wall cavity, whatever's eating that wall cavity as well. Right, so we're right over the other side of the house. This is in the southeastern corner of the house. You can see moss growing on the brickwork here. That's because it's not getting any sun. Now, that's going to produce a lot of water or dew. That can have a capillary reaction and come under here. There's no secondary flushing and there's gaps in this block work, which means water's going to start going inside the actual cavity of the house. The internal corners aren't sealed very well whatsoever. They're actually continuing, you can see that. And there's no real fall on these. It's really important that we put a fall on a sill so all the water runs away from the house. It doesn't sit here or go backwards. Another thing to look at, which is super important. Now, this is one of the most important sections of a house is the structural integrity of the house. Now, right up the top here, you can see this here. This here is a steel lintel that's holding all of the block work above it, whether that be brickwork, um, the the sandstone that we we're looking at before, any of that stuff. Now, if salt gets into a lintel like this, what ends up happening is it'll start to rot and it'll expand. The rust will start to expand. And what'll end up happening is the block work, everything along the top of it can actually start to pop off and fall off the wall. So again, need to be super duper careful with any steel work that we use. Stainless steel, galvanized, we need to re-galvanize it. Stainless steel needs to be high quality stainless steel, not cheapy, deleepy stuff. Here we've got a breathing vent for our heating system or gas system. So you can see that's got discoloration, but it's a high quality zinc. Um, although it's heating up, it's not flaking right off and there's no rust I can see at all on that. That's a really good sign. Copper is also something really good that can be used around sea area. Copper won't rust away, obviously. It's a really good metal to use. Uh, it can just be a little bit soft, so you wouldn't be using it for stru um, structural integrity, just for a cladding. Now this is stainless steel and this is discoloring. So you you can see this is stainless steel and this is actually discoloring. There's rust coming through on the side of that. It's really one of those things where we're not sure about the quality of a material we get until obviously we put it into a place like this that's in the elements, that cops a good beating, and then you can see what it's actually made of. So it doesn't always pay to pay the top dollar quality, but it does pay to do your research and find good quality materials. Now, Flora, that concludes our walk around. If you have, in a nutshell, this is me in a nutshell. <laughs> if uh, you have a house down near the ocean, down near the sea, you need to make sure that you go to the nth degree to prepare everything. So prepare and seal, prepare and seal. Do your homework on the different materials, understand the quality materials that you're using and understand the area that you're building in. Not only that, but also have a look at the trajectory of the sun on the house and the way that you can change your materials to suit that. That'll be the color of the flashings and the roofing. Don't use a black flashing if you can help it. Use a flashing that's a light color, preferably. So then it doesn't absorb too much heat. I'll try and do a video for you guys actually on that, just having a look at the different types of roofing color and how it affects the heat of a house. Thanks for watching. Any other questions or queries about that, flick them over. 
Flora, I hope I've answered everything for you as well. And until next time, like always, everyone, stay awesome. Thanks for watching.